are talking about Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Power. So, it's in the title. There's a focus on rings. This is episode two of season two. And there's a lot to love. Sumptuous visuals, <laughs> acting, very on point. They are juggling a lot of different characters at this point. You're into season two with a big story. And we are touching on all kinds of different players at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that to be tiny bit challenging here and there, but I found it entertaining, gripping, and I really want to watch episode three. So this is one of the first three that were shared at the beginning of the release schedule. And so we could just jump on it and we eagerly watch the premiere episode. Now we've gotten to episode two. I sort of want to jump on episode three right away. So they did their job. I think if we break down different things and get into the acting and the writing, music and spirituality, all that, that'll be great. But one of the things I was thinking about was something about balance in terms of across the stories, in terms of across some of the themes that came up. Hmm. And I wonder if any of the things that you saw in this episode made you think about balance, because I can share why, but I thought before we get into breaking down things the way we usually do, that theme occurred to me. Does it ring a bell for you if I say balance with this episode as to like what I might be talking about? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, I, I, I could find instances of balance or imbalance, um, but um, it's not jumping out at me um, more than other episodes. Um, oh, well, what about other episodes we can definitely touch on? We're okay to draw from the fact well, that I mean, we've seen a lot of other episodes. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking story. about how a lot of it is sort of trying to combat imbalance, you know, trying to get things back into balance. Um, you know, the evil is spreading and they need to find the balance to, you know, defeat the evil and all you know, that sort of thing. Um, but, um, you know, things are, yeah, they're, they're, like the struggle is usually a struggle to get back into balance is the way I think about it. Um, but um, what do you think about balance? Well, I was thinking a little about the storytelling balance between uh, different storylines. And I was thinking also a little bit about a previous episode, as you said, where they're still struggling with, with the rings of power. How much should they trust their own abilities, the elves, to use these rings for good effect, to good effect, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when they know Sauron was involved in the creation of it, masquerading as Halbran. Mm -hmm. So I think there's this balance of, you know you intend to do a certain thing, but you're working with materials, you're working with the situation that is intent for another purpose. Right. So you don't want to maybe just abandon all hope because you can't work with exactly what you want, which is, I guess, what brought Elrond across the episode to finally saying, okay, I can re-engage with my elven sisters and brothers who are wearing these rings because I know they're trying. He was convinced by one of the wise elder mm -hmm. elves that, look, just because the creator of something was not good in a certain way doesn't mean you want to throw out the creation. And I think that definitely strikes a chord for all of us in modern times where we're thinking about canceling artists, rightly so, because of the things they do as people, but right. we can still maybe appreciate their art because it moved mm -hmm. us in a deep way and served us in the kind of, purpose that's maybe good mm -hmm. how you do that so you don't keep feeding problematic creators right you gotta be careful right. it was a great point but i thought that there's a balance between you have this ideal the elves especially but all of us have an ideal thing how we want to do something and then you're thrown into the mixed bag of what really you can do mm. given other people have affected the materials you're working with or the context you're working in, the budget, the timing, the whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a balance between reality and practicality and your vision and not losing sight of it. Cause you can't just not manifest the thing that you're supposed to be manifesting because other folks are sullying your <laughs> vision. <laughs> I don't know if that connects so much to balance, but that's what was in my mind about mm -hmm, the whole episode. Mm -hmm. They're balancing across a bunch of different storylines. Right. And I have opinions about whether or not that got pulled off really well. I think it's definitely overall a good episode because you can't keep the same fierce energy as the premiere of your season. It's so hard to keep that anyway. Maybe some people can. Maybe you can share 
season two, episode twos of other series where they keep that energy. But it is really hard because if you do a great job of kicking mm -hmm. off the season, you usually have some other things that mm -hmm. were not as bombastic that you need to get in and you got to do it in episode two or we forget about it pretty much. Mm -hmm. So they had to do that. Right. But I found that balance came to mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's a big theme throughout the whole series, you know, the, finding the balance of the different races, the balance yeah. of the different, you know, balancing the power and balancing the, you know, all sorts of, yeah, I think it's... The three rings from the elves. They mm -hmm. have three rings to have a balancing point. So there's not just a tug of war between two. There's mm -hmm. not just the all powerful or more powerful one. Yeah. There's three. That's a nice balancing point. It just feels interesting to me to think about it. I think about it a lot for other parts of my life, like balancing your left and right hand for drumming. Mm -hmm. You want know, like an even mm -hmm. possibility for yourself. Oh, yeah. You want to right. execute a groove. You want to make sure if you have an accent, it's not because you have one hand that's favored. So you want to balance. Right. But let's just go ahead and speak a little bit about the pacing. Because that's one of the things I was thinking about with balance. Literally, there was just a moment that I mentioned while we were watching oh, episode yeah. two mm -hmm. where I thought the pacing was a little indulgent, and yes. I'll go ahead and say yes. it. So if folks will remember, last episode, I think it was just the last one. Maybe it was the season, previous season. No, the where, previous season. Previous season. Okay, yeah. so a previous episode. Probably not the previous episode immediately, but right. probably the previous season episode. Yeah. We have our stranger being able to dispatch with those three white witches, kind mm -hmm, of. I, mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly what they're called, but y'all can look it up and we can try to pull up good terms and stuff here soon. And when they were dispatched with, they transformed into moths or something yes, like that, I some winged moths, insects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we now see these winged insects reemerge in the confines a household the big castle i guess of this wizard in the east mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think that we're supposed to know who that wizard is so we can also look that up too but they took a long time i think loving the, the filmmakers took a long i mean sorry the series creators took a long time loving that visual with all those winged creatures yeah, coming yeah, together yeah. and we said well we know who it's gonna be right Right. So why are we taking so long? Because right. it's really not a surprise. We just didn't know if it was going to be all three of them. Or, or yeah, and or it ended up being just the one. Right, right. And so that was the only mystery. But it took quite a while. And I turned yeah, to Tim. Yeah, I said, yeah. okay, so we know who this is. So why is it taking so long? They like this shot. Right, <laughs> so, right, right, right. so that was the only little bit. Because otherwise, I appreciate that there's going to be some me having to keep up and stay aware. Yeah. Because there are these different storylines to be pulled from. So when first we revisited the stranger and uh, Nori and Poppy traveling through Rune, the desert landscape. I was like, oh, are we in Rune now? And it just took me a moment, but it didn't take me super long. And I get it. It doesn't have to be that difficult for me to, to realize I'm going to have to work a little bit. But I just thought it wasn't a confusion thing. I was just like, move on. <laughs> With what? That, that one shot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they just took a little bit of time there. And I right. said, okay, we're taking that much time now. Yeah, yeah. So. The CGI folks were like, hey, we're not getting enough uh, time on the screen here. So, yeah, I don't know. But it yeah. Was, yeah it was just the only pacing issue. So yeah, the yeah. balance between, you know, that visual is so cool. Because I was telling you when yeah. time was taken to go into the mines where the dwarves are, well, into the, the mountain landscape where they yeah, live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was beautiful to establish how the light travels down yeah, so you can yeah. understand when. It had a purpose. A, yeah, yeah, it had a purpose to reveal something that's going to happen later so you really understood. Right, right, right. This was not, I don't think, purposeful. This was just, right. could have been we think it's purdy. Yeah, it could have been, yeah, quite a few seconds less. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I got to say, I think, I think that's the truth. But it's not, yeah, it wasn't a big deal, but yeah, but I agree with you. It was a little bit indulgent. Um, given the bit, fact that we bit. pretty much knew what was going to happen. so I'm yeah. just pulling up our uh, episode here so we can see if we can get our names and things right. So while I'm doing that, why don't you share a little bit about what came to mind? Because we are going to talk about writing, acting. We, I guess in the pacing issue, yeah. that's a little bit of combination of writing and, right. and editing. But why don't you talk about whatever you might want yeah. to and I'll pull so up So with this episode, what came to mind was uh, the concept of faith. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in 
just about mo most uh, religious traditions, spiritual traditions that I know of, um, faith plays a large part because, you know, there's so much um, that we don't know. Um, we're not you know, enlightened beings. We don't understand everything. We don't know how to get to where we want to go. Um, and um, so we have to go on faith sometimes. Um, you know, just sort of trust people who have been down the path and have um, gained some insights um, or, yeah, just, uh, you know, just go on what you feel is going to get you where you want to go, even though you don't know for sure. So, and, you know, that's truly, true, that's, yeah, it's true in, in life in all different aspects. Um, you know, we have to sort of whether it's what we're reading online and it might be a deep fake, it might not, I don't know. You have to, you have, to have some faith, you have to trust, you know, obviously not Trust but verify not, yeah, in not some blind, cases, not, not, not blind faith. Not blind yeah. faith, of course. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to make a decision. You have to make a choice and, uh, you know, you just have to have some faith. And a lot of these characters are having to do that, you know, with Sauron being, you know, Ooh, you, know yeah. you don't know who he is or what's, what's going on yeah. and you have to, and, uh, you know, you don't know whether the rings are good or bad or what, you know, you just have to sort of go on some faith and, uh, you know, use as much wisdom as you can and uh, yeah. just go from there. So. Yeah, speaking of Sauron, yeah, he tests mm -hmm. people's faith all the time because he really mm -hmm. shook Galadriel. And she knows yeah. that he can get to her again. And so it's such a relief for her in a certain kind of way when Elrond agrees to help her go out under her mission. Oh, wait, no, Elrond's actually going to lead it mm -hmm. because the elves wisely are thinking, he got to you, girl. Right. Like, right. You know? right. <laughs> like, And she admitted he's still in there. So yeah. she yeah. is really holding up the hand saying, hey, I made a mistake mm -hmm. and it's still affecting me. Right. So I appreciate that. Yeah. So I think we talked about the connection spiritually. I think mm -hmm. that, that faith is really interesting because there is a lot of, but you have to exercise great judgment to go along with it. Because I mm -hmm. think sometimes oh, we disagree about, not you and me personally, but people in general mm -hmm. disagree about where the line is between, please investigate more. You don't have to leave that to faith. Right. Or, yeah, you need to leave that to faith. There's a different place for different right. people where some of us use judgment analysis a lot and then leave a small set of things to faith. Right. And then other folks leave a lot more to faith and you think, well, you could just Google that. And then you could know <laughs> right. some more. Right. You know, maybe right. go to a newspaper article, go to a library. I don't know. Right. Like right. you can do a little bit more and then you can go on faith. Mm -hmm. okay. So this should be interesting to see how that plays out if you're noticing that theme for other I was, episodes. I was just thinking like how that dates you. You're just like a newspaper article, a library. A, a, a what? A go, library? Go somewhere? Did you say a library like they have in Chapel Hill? <laughs> no, you said a library? Oh, uh, how gosh. They have Books. What those are? Those are ebooks. You those, mean ebooks? Those paper things. That yeah. Anyway. Sounds dusty. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We now have pulled up so we can use proper terms and whatnot. But in general, I just think the acting doesn't go wrong for me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think there are some challenges with the writing to pack in so much and then set up things for later. Mm -hmm. The music. That's another key thing. Mm -hmm. So when revisiting the dwarves now with right, this right. episode of this season, mm -hmm. we get to have Disa, who is mm -hmm. the prince who's now been outcast out of King Durin's favor, but still in the dwarven community, but not close with the right. king. He's working the mines. He's working in the mines <laughs> like regular dwarves. Mm -hmm. And feeling that angst of not being close to his dad and worrying about what's going on which is shaking the whole dwarf community. But Disa's going on and saying, hey, I believe that we're still able to commune with the mountain. And so she's called up to do the uh, stone singing. Mm -hmm. And it does not go well, y'all, but the music. Now, mm -hmm. I think at other points when they're singing, I don't know if this is true, but at other points when they're singing to the stones, I don't think it was as much of a wail Right, right, right. I think this time it was this Because they were really way. trying hard. Really they were, hard. and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I found it beautiful, but also very clearly pained. So I appreciated how there's a lot of development of the story connected to music. And uh, I think that wasn't the only place that they referenced music. I think another place people were talking about um, 
like the song of something. I, you know, I just, I was appreciating little messages that people had. Of, mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking about the, um, the acting between oh. the, between the, like the dwarves versus the elves. Oh, the way the dwarf personalities yeah, are yeah. acted. How, yeah. oh, I loved how Sophia Numveti, how the actress Sophia, who's playing Princess Disa, I mm-hmm. loved her choices. They were angry, intense, yeah, yeah. Very bold, passionate, yeah. very dwarf, yeah. very dwarf. Right, right, right. Um, you know, whereas the, the elves are so reserved. They really are. Um, which, no, I like elves. They're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there are a few, like the um, the really old one, the shipwright guy, the, the guy who builds the ships and or is in that community. He leads them, leads the shipbuilders, I guess. Anyway. I don't even know who you're talking he's about. The, he's the old wise guy who This was, one right here, though. I just pulled Yes, up. yes, yes. That mm-hmm. guy, yeah. What's okay. his name? Kierden. Uh, Kierden. Okay, good. Um, he's, I didn't he's know great. he built ships, y'all. I oh, only okay. know him as the wise elder. Right, right, I didn't right. know his, like, what do you do besides sit around being wise? Right, right. <laughs> you build ships. You do other things. Right. Being wise is not a full gig. Um, <laughs> uh, that actor is... I, I really like him. He, he oh, brings yeah. like a lot of the uh, when the, the, when they're acting as elves, they're a little sort flat, of, like really reserved. little flat, little yeah, flat. Yeah, but that's an elf choice. I didn't ever think that was anything but saying this is what these elves are. They have the pressure of power on them. Yeah, so maybe it's because they have the pressure of power on them and maybe. they're not at peace. Maybe what we're seeing is uh, they're trying okay, yeah, to not yeah. like a not like a Vulcan thing where you don't want to show any emotion, but, but maybe because Vulcan, they're in power. I was, I was comparing them to Vulcans, and I was thinking well, a lot of the Vulcans have a more of a like like it, they don't feel like they're holding stuff like they're so like the, they're so the, practiced with it yeah that's the, the vulcans yeah a lot of the, the elves, whole other a lot of the elves just feel like because, how, how they act it you know it, yeah they feel like because there's passion underneath they yeah. have emotion underneath yeah, but they're just yeah, yeah, yeah. i think the elves that we're but seeing too they might just be elves in power maybe in yeah. difficult situations yeah. they're not just kicking it with their friends right, they're talking right. about big kingdom middle earth shaping the history of decisions right right but i I also too felt that i did but i never thought it was a fault of the actors i just felt it was how they're rendering these elf characters to be consistent across what's the vibe and culture for this court and these people in power right right but kieran is not like that he's like come on yeah i'm old i'm just gonna keep it more like down to what's wise, what's mm-hmm, real. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna hold it all in. Right, right. It's like life is interesting. Let's yeah. get on with it. Let's talk about what's really mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Let let a little of that emotion in. Let a little of the things you didn't plan and hold on to so tightly. And right. But yeah. even the uh, you know the um, the Harfoot people, Poppy and, and Nori. Right. And the uh, with the stranger, the stranger, and you know even like it's the different races have you know have their different things um even them and, what were we gonna yeah, say yeah, about yeah. their so, portrayal like, they're yeah. great i love them yeah so it's just like the elves uh, tend to more so have this like that like yeah that they're, they're holding stuff in you know yeah. not not just like they're just talking but they're like oh, i am in talking. this situation yeah. they are because i think yeah. what's going on is there's a lot of tension here. They're about to have to move from their home of some considerable time. But they're supposed to be like so wise and so, you know, But that's all this the stuff. thing. In this know. age, you know, they've already been tested and had like real losses mm-hmm. and had their worlds really darkened. Right, right. So I think that where we're seeing them, they're not so far out of war right and real right. loss mm-hmm. and thinking okay now we're uprooted we've lost we have to admit defeat i guess there's a lot of whole a lot of grief they're holding in yeah yeah that could be it yeah. one of the things i love about because the they brandy live, they, oh. they live so long that yeah, they're they, holding a lot they hold yeah I mean, whereas Need elf therapy whereas the uh Har- harfoot you know it's been a few generations maybe since since they had some big they stay thing. in a certain amount of stress and tension because the harfoots are halfling smaller mm-hmm. and so i like that we're seeing threats to their because with the later stories that tolkien writes when they're hobbits and they're settled they're sort of immune a bit from right. conflict right. for right. the most part right. but some of the hobbits go out for conflict mm-hmm. go out to be involved in big stories yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
but not so here. Right. Here, the Harfoots are in danger. When you're traveling right, and you're journeying, mm -hmm. they have to be ready to camouflage themselves at any point. Right. Because right. they're small, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. are not defenseless completely, but they're not going around like with a lot of big weaponry. Yeah. So their yeah. real thing is got to stay sharp. Yeah. Be ready to drop right. cover. Right, right. <laughs> I like that they're not just presented as comic relief all the time. Their mm -hmm. struggles are absolutely gripping, especially yeah. with The Stranger. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good shift for me, appreciating right. the Hobbits, not just little and quirky. They're, right, right, right. They have a way, unlike the elves, to just let it out, make a joke, crack the tension mm -hmm. with the joke. Mm -hmm. And they mourn their lost ones, and they have their ways to be brave. And you see them regularly right. showing different sides, not just, hee hee, aren't they so funny, hee hee. Right, right. So I appreciate that. Yeah. The acting, talked about it. The music, love the interweaving mm -hmm. of serious places in the storytelling connecting to music. Yeah. Love it. And then the writing talked about some of the challenges of having so many different storylines and you're in second season and you have all the Tolkien stuff that you can pull from mm -hmm. that I guess that these folks have the rights to pull from. And what a challenge, but I'm still interested and engaged. Talked about spiritual connection, environmental connection. Again, when you have so many powerful beings that can shift a lot of things on a dime, it's not the same way that we think about our very realistic environmental balancing of wanting to use this but not use it up completely for the future. Mm -hmm. But I do think you're right that there's these stark contrasts of environments around what's evil is usually not seen as this lush, beautiful, plentiful right, environment, right. except when you get the window dressing of Sauron when he's accepting his guises of different um, characters he's going to pretend to be, like this bringer of gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that looks beautiful and glossy and very mm -hmm. iconic, like different presentations in the movies of mm -hmm. Moses or Jesus sure. or all these right, things. So, right. But that's not an environmental connection. I was just thinking about how <laughs> sometimes bad stuff doesn't get the nice, uh, right, right. let's make it look yucky. Right, right, sometimes right. Sauron dressing mm -hmm, up, you know. Mm -hmm. But as far as an environmental connection, the most I could think about was how stark the environment is and it really forces you to think deeply about what you can and cannot do when they're in Rune. Right. So when the stranger and Poppy and Nori are, right. and they're really like in a bad way trying to avoid who's tracking them, which we know, but they don't know, is for this wizard in the east. Mm -hmm. And so they go into a path that they thought would be a really bad idea, but they are going there to try to avoid being tracked. Mm -hmm. And they come to desperate straits and then find water, but the water, the way they get it, rings a bell, an alarm mm -hmm. bell, and then the trackers come to get them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the stranger just unleashes. summons, <laughs> unleashes the sandstorm of power. And, mm -hmm. And we don't know what has happened to our Harfoots from that because right. they, they got, got blown, blown away. Blown away right. Yeah, so to be continued, which I thought was very satisfying in terms of other things were brought to a point that I knew exactly what was going on with the elves. You know, Elrond is going to go off with Galadriel and right. he's going to actually lead the expedition. So a lot of things were wrapped up pretty nicely. So I didn't feel like too many strings were dangling right. loose. Right. I have a lot more to say about it. I just, yeah. I feel like honestly, if I'm excited to go to the next episode, then right. you did your job. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, all yeah. around and all yeah. the creative they departments. Set, yeah, it seems like they set up each little uh, yeah. s section to like, you know, you're you thinking, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Yeah, you do. You do. And that's really tricky yeah. when you've got to think about what went before and, got to, and you have a certain amount of time. The nice thing with the streaming is they have a bit more like a movie length of time and they yeah. really aren't having to subscribe to like a 40 minute thing. Yeah. And they really get in there. But I'm telling y'all, next time, if, if y'all can buzz in the ear, we don't need that long, cool graphic <sighs> for the winged insects going into the... the yeah. They, they probably the just... Uh, like, yeah. Just... We get it, y'all. Right. It's it's cool. They need, they like it was to, a cool shot. They didn't have enough story. They needed to fill in a few, you know. You don't need to. That's the thing. Thirty seconds. That's and... what I'm saying. You don't need to. Wow. It's it's the dark wizard. Okay, so this is called the dweller. So when the dweller of this three, this trio of these people oh, who okay. are stalking right, right, our right. stranger in season one, when uh, the dark wizard summons the dweller, mm -hmm. we don't we didn't need that much time. So next time right, right. you get a summons, just 
you know, arrive. <laughs> can you please just just arrive? You yeah. don't have to. It doesn't have to be instantaneous. But you can cut to right before. There was this whole <laughs> thing of the blood being let out by right, right. another person under the power of or under well serving yeah. this uh yeah. dark wizard right, right and so that was interesting because it had yeah. to be sacrificed to get right, right. that power to summon this mm-hmm, right. dweller right. so but it could have yeah it could have happened faster. because to still should just spit at a balloon yet yeah I don't really appreciate all the person hours that go into that graphic. See, right. those who are, like you said, in that department, they're like, we sweat and work so hard. We <laughs> demand some time. And they're, you know, I because I don't actually do that, I don't do that kind of mm. stuff in any of my production, I don't appreciate it. So yeah. y'all let us know out there that we are completely lucky that they only showed us as much because that takes so much blood sweat and tears to make it look halfway decent yeah. don't you hate it when people take way too much time on a certain thing <laughs> like talking about how people would take way too a much whole time episode. on a certain thing <laughs> look we just spent all that time talking about we wasted too much like don't you hate ding, that? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Yeah. well we'll keep it short and just say thanks for checking this out here and if you haven't already seen our conversation about episode one of season two of the rings of power then check that out we are going to excitedly check out the next episode that's already available and we might keep with it it just depends if they keep our interest and if we have other things that y'all recommend we should see we might fold those into our viewing episodes most likely we'll have a new episode out every week so Mm -hmm. that's generally how we're actually filming it too pretty much film it and then share it with y'all All right, y'all. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.